What's up guys, it's LP here. Today we'll be doing a bit different. So the guy you see over there lost the audio files and now I'll have to figure out everything I have to say in the video and hopefully have a mic drop moment by the end of this video. And oh, the dog wasn't the culprit in this chapter of the story. And I hope you guys like this video, subscribe and share. Today we'll be looking at the 2006 Range Rover Sports. This car came out when I was in primary and I won't say the class cause I know you guys are quick at doing your math. <laughs> anyway, when it came out, it was a new look to the Range Rover lineup with the more sporty shape. I believe this car is what started the craze of sporty SUVs. Two years later, we got to see the BMW stick on a sporty SUV with the X6. When this car came out, the X6, I saw it from the back, I thought that was the front. So it was a, it was a craze, you know. All hell broke loose then. Because now every other company started getting into it. Right now in 2020, generally SUVs and sporty SUVs are the in thing. Get to know the first gen Range Rover Sport better. This model was produced from 2006 to 2013. The first lived around 2010 which was visually identified with more aerodynamic front end, including new headlights, the grille, the rear lights, and the front and rear bumper. The second gen Range Rover Sport was a Range Rover that took the Sport name later, with a whole lot of improvements developed from around 2014 to the present day. The car we're looking at today has the same underpinnings as the Discovery 3, the Range Rover Sport is offered in two trims, the HSE and the Supercharged, while the HSE just means high specification equipment emerging. I thought it would be more fancy than that, you know. <laughs> oh, and the second trim is the Supercharged, which got all the stuff in the HSE and some more. Safety features include anti-lock Brembo brakes on all four wheels, which just means this car can stop. This car needs those kind of brakes being that it's so big and so heavy so rainbows are there to stop this car safety features include anti-lock brembo brakes on all the four wheels traction and stability control hill descent control side impact and head cutting airbags an electric parking brake while you find the supercharged models include adaptive headlights that look around the corners and adjust up and down to counter the effects of hard braking and heavy cargo loads. How cool is that? So, starting from the boot of the Range Rover Sport. The Sport comes with a semi-split tailgate. Semi, I say semi cause on the big boy Range Rover, you have this tailgate that opens down and upwards, where you can sit on, as you can see on this part of the video. Anyway, on the Sport, we get a semi-split tailgate where the glass bit is one that splits up, or you choose to open the whole boot. The split glass bit is only meant for picking and putting small items. Please, don't be found loading a huge suitcase through this zone. Don't disappoint your ancestors. Moving on into the space, you will find ample room for all your shopping, city errand manenos, and outdoor manenos. Here at the back, you get your parcel shelf. Parcel shelf is just this upper liner that covers things that you have inside your boot so that people who are outside can't see them other people say peasants <laughs> peasant blockers but yeah just to help people to people who are outside not to see the things you have inside your car when the tailgate the upper tailgate part the glass part is open you can move your parcel shelf a bit further to remove the things you want to remove if they are light loads but you can remove the whole thing and slide to the back to the whole front if you want to have taller items in that area moving on you find your 
um, to the bottom here you have your first aid kit and some other things like your tools to change your spare wheel the thing with this spare wheel this car has 20 inch rims they're quite big and that is a problem believe me if you want to change the spare wheel in this car it will be a hassle that's why you never see Range Rover owners on the side of the road changing the spare wheel they rather have somebody doing it because it's too much work you will sweat you will sweat <laughs> moving on you have your um, 12 volt power socket and i'll show you a really nice equipment these guys have here for stopping um you know how like when you're changing your wheels you usually put a stone to stop your car from rolling forward or rolling backwards then they provide you with a stopper an actual metal stopper this is a whole other level of doing things but I, I kind of appreciate it for them thinking ahead and having this there for you when you want to change your spare wheel. Moving into the back seat of the Range Rover. First of all, how do I feel? It's comfortable. The seats are soft. But getting in, the first thing I would do, I would remove the headrest and push it up because it digs into your back. The next thing I get to see is the side seal of the door. The top part is a nice leather wrapping with some wood inlay and as it goes lower it becomes plastic. But whatever you're touching at the top is soft. Moving on from there, both outer seats have a heating function. So but I, I, I don't really get why this option would work here in Kenya because I feel our country is really so hot being that during the day if you leave your car outside I would really like to come up to my car and have my bum cooled rather than heated maybe in the morning but I don't really I don't really understand why I would want a heated seat I feel like the cool would be better next thing your grab handles are there for when your driver is taking you guys off-road and you're being shook all over you grab onto your life you grab onto your seat or you grab onto the grab handle on top of this door seal you find your multimedia functions i feel as if this car had a tv on the on the rear or on the front headrests where the back occupants could uh, have the entertainment as they are moving along but it seems like either it was removed or it wasn't optioned out fully the roof liners in these old german cars or british cars usually start peeling or falling like they warp downwards but that's usually an easy fix it wouldn't be as, as, as expensive as let me say the cracking of the dashboard in most of these suvs or german suvs on the seat the seat is quite comfortable as i said before though my thigh is not supported because the seat is quite flat my thigh doesn't have enough support so i feel like on longer journeys my bum would start hurting or start aching and it's never a good experience really it, it hurts moving down to the center console you have your 12 volt and heated seat function and the center seat as i get to the center seat it's okay you can sit here and be okay for quite some time but i feel like the outer seats the bolstering of the seats is squeezing my bum to be at the center so for a child it would be quite comfortable for an adult you'd feel as if you're being touched but if you're sitting katikati just sit down and be humble back seat storage is okay though for the spacing that you have for behind the seat it's just a small document area to put small files and all that you can fit a child seat on both outer seats though on the center one you can't there's no isofix centers put so you can only put your child seat on the two outer seats getting into the front seat of the Rover sport first thing i have to say is that doorstep is just amazing it helps you get into this car like that like it's effortless and i appreciate it for being there in this car one sits pretty high up in the car it gives you a sense of command on the road and the horn as you've had there doesn't disappoint either unlike the japanese counterparts 
The materials in the car is good enough, being that back then, Range Rover did not go all out as they do right now in their autobiography um, trims or models. The infotainment is easy to use, but if you've noticed, I don't go through much of that because I know there's much, there's nothing much we use them here in Kenya for, other than playing our personal music and streaming radio stations. You feel safe and secure and planted on the Range Rover Sport, and this sense of assurance makes you want to push the car harder on open roads. At this level, you definitely, if not always, get electric adjustable seats, manual for who, and they give you the option to save up to three seat settings for your perfect driving position, especially if you share the car in a family. No need to always set your seating position, it's already saved and with the press of a button, the seat will put itself on the setting you had saved it at. Build quality in this car is just to another level. This is an old car, but it feels quite sturdy. The interior of the Range Rover is generally a good space to be in, and the materials are good for all the places you touch and get to interact with on a daily. The cubby spaces are fair in size to hold all easy grab-ups but not as big as some other competitors. Plus the glove box having a top and bottom is an easy to organize your things in. The sunroof is a good addition to bring in some light and sun to the front seat occupants when needed. While in Kenya we use it more for campaigns and once you have such a car Weweni Muheshimiwa, direct, and all the fundraising in your community, you will always be the guest of honor. <laughs> Shida Kwako. Moving on to the hood. Opening the hood is quite easy, just a latch on the passenger side of, of, the, of the door. You pull it and the bonnet pops up. The standard range of a sport is powered by a 4.4 liter V8 that makes 300 horsepower and 315 pound feet of torque. As you'd expect, the supercharged, the one we have here today, model features a supercharged version of this engine that ups the power to 390 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque, 410 actually. Both engines use a six speed automatic transmission with adaptive shift logic that adapts to the road condition and driving styles. Likewise, they both get Land Rover's terrain response system that adjusts everything from total response traction control, electronic stability control to vary off-road conditions. The supercharged Sport also features active roll control to improve cornering performance on pavement. Mm -hmm. On the center console we have various driving aids. As I'll be pointing here we have our air suspension up and down. You'll see that in a bit. Then we have our low range and high range, hill descent assist, plus the center rotary knob that has general driving, grass and gravel, snow, mud and rats, sand, and rock crawl. Many owners have complained about the Range Rover Sport not being capable off-road unlike the other ones. The thing with the Range Rover Sport, okay, one can be the tires you're running, and the big rims that it has, 20 inch or the, two, or the 21 inch rims. The other thing is that the Range Rover Sport with this plethora of electronic driving aids needs you to learn how to set up the car for the best experience while off-roading. If not, you just find yourself stuck and wondering why. But again, many owners of the Range Rover Sport will never or will rarely take these cars on bad roads. To conclude, what are my thoughts on the Range Rover Sport? The car has held up to the test of time with the looks, and no matter where you turn up with the car, people will still give it and the person driving it the respect. If the car is well maintained and doesn't miss its regular checks, the Range Rover Sport can be very reliable. The only issue is if you skip maintenance and cheap out on parts, then you'll be a very frustrated owner and your pocket won't like it either. 
So if you're looking for the Mushimiwa title and not holding back on enjoying the final things in life, a powerful British V8 and a bonnet and a wallet to back it all up, then this is the kind of car for you. <laughs>